Hi everyone, we're now live. Welcome to the virtual IoT meetup. I have Kai and Mikael with me today and our new marketing specialist Kat will be joining us for a little bit. And today's topic is software updates in IoT with Eclipse Hawkbit. And it's very exciting and an Eclipse project that Mikael and Kai will be pleased to tell you all about. So without further ado, here they are. Thank you. Um, actually, um, our plan or how we want to do this is uh, I will start with um, some introduction information about the project and how it got started and, and what we wanted to achieve with it. And then uh, Michael will take over um, from that point on with a lot, couple of demonstrations on several features. Um, maybe first two words about myself, Kai Zimmerman. I'm working here for Bosch and I'm currently the project lead of Eclipse Hawkbit and also one of the committers for the project. Um, so let's come directly to the topic. I guess Michael will introduce himself when he takes over. If that is okay with you, Michael? Fine, go ahead. Okay. Um, so software updates in IoT and Eclipse Hawkbit. Um, so what we did with Eclipse Hawkbit, or first we start with a general um, definition. It's actually a cloud-ready service uh, that allows to um, to perform the main independent backend or the main independent software update in the IoT context. So what do we mean with domain independent? What we have figured out over time doing IoT projects over here is that from the backend perspective, software update is relatively equal between the different IoT domains. So coming from automotive to industry, smart home, energy, what have you. Um, while software update in IoT context is very different on the different kind of devices, so as you might guess, uh, updating, let's say, um, embedded um, control unit or embedded device um, just with one firmware is completely def different from updating a vehicle. A vehicle, for instance, has dozens of devices inside. Um, it has uh, firmware scenarios by means of basically the operating system of every single device. It has app store-like scenarios with additional features that you might want to update on the vehicle, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You might even have the requirement when you're updating multiple devices that you have a kind of transactional scope around those. And again, on the other side, very simple scenarios. So as you might guess, on the device, or on the virtual device, if you will, um, it's very different, um, the update. Um, differs uh, how complicated it is and what you have to do, and, and of course, how much traffic you will generate, how much um, artifacts you have to download and apply to the devices, how much information you have to exchange with the cloud, et cetera, et cetera. But from the backend perspective, at the end of the day, you bring together a piece of software and a device. And as a result, we have decided over here to create a service. This was, this was actually several years ago um, that basically handles all that, um, manages the artifacts, manages the devices, bring those two together, manage a rollout-like capabilities when you have to bring a lot of devices, actually, um, or update a lot of devices. Um, we come to many, we made many, many experience over time and actually most of our results have been put into Hawkbit um, from the different kind of um, integration you want to have. So for instance, you want to um, connect your device directly to the service or indirectly. Um, a lot of stuff uh, we figured out over time and all of that we put into Hawkbit. We will come to this later. Um, a little bit about, a little bit more about motivation and background. So software update, we call this a core IoT process because at the end of the day, it's basically needed in every IoT project uh, we have seen so far. It is unfortunately one of those processes that is usually not in the center of the business case itself. Usually you have, a, I don't know, a telematics scenario, you have a management scenario where you basically use the devices to manage an overall landscape, like managing your smart home manage a factory, a plant, whatever. So software update in most cases is not the business case itself, but it's still needed. However, that being said, because it is not in the center of the business case, usually what we have figured out is that over time it's usually the last thing people think about. Uh, nevertheless, it is uh, quite important for most IoT scenarios because basically when you connect a device to the cloud, you're opening uh, basically Pandora's box by means from that point on your device is threatened by all those nasty people around sitting around in the internet. As a result, you should be at least be able to apply security updates. 
Um, however, it also opens up a lot of interesting use cases. Um, you might introduce App Store-like scenarios by selling and shipping additional functionality over time. It opens basically the whole hardware near development um, for the agile world, so you can create something like a minimum viable product and then add additional functionality over time, uh, basically get your device smarter over time. So there's a lot of, let me say, um, interesting features that you might, or interesting capabilities that you might add to your overall project. Um, however, at the end of the day, it is basically part of every IoT project. Um, what we saw is that many IoT solutions actually take care of this problem themselves. So first they take care of all the business cases, and then they figure out, okay, we need a little, lot of infrastructure at the end of the day, and then they add software update capability. What we came up with is, okay, we create a general purpose service um, that is focused on software update, and this reduces unnecessary duplicate work. Um, I mentioned already the domain independent part. Um, what many people do actually is introducing a general purpose device management that does software update next to many other capabilities. However, um, usually because they are so general purpose, they are not as feature rich uh, when it comes to pure software update. They are not covering all the topics. Usually you have to put that on top. Um, and in addition, not every IoT project really fits very well to a standard of the self device management with all its features. Um, however, we have created Hogbit in a way that allows us to integrate with basically every kind of device management. So we have APIs for that. Uh, I will come to that later, more in a second. Um, so this is a general overview about Hogbit, what it's able to do. Uh, in the center is the service itself. We call this the update server. Um, it has basically three core capabilities. Uh, one is obviously a repository where all your devices are registered. Uh, all the software metadata is available. Um, so at the end of the day, that is all the metadata you need in order to perform your software update. Also to figure out, OK, what has been installed on which device at which point in time, et cetera, et cetera. So it has auditing capabilities. Um, the second um, part is a content delivery. Um, actually, that's more than what a content delivery network um, allows you to do, uh, because it does not only do authentication for devices, um, which all, basically all our device integration interfaces do, but in addition, also authorization. That means a device is only allowed to download what has been assigned to that device in the first place. Um, we believe that that is actually a quite important feature uh, in that content, because you don't want to allow, just because somebody has a device, it doesn't necessarily mean that you want to allow him uh, to update basically everything that you got in your repository. Um, and of course, the third area, the most important one, is the software update management, or we in some cases call it rollout management. Um, basically, rollout management is, uh, we will come to that in a little bit more detail later on, um, is when you have large amounts of devices um, and you want to have a secure and managed rollout over all these devices and you don't want to just push a big red button and then hope for the best because you basically told all your devices that you have in the field at the same time, uh, please update. Um, we offer four interfaces uh, for integration. I will start southbound. Uh, these are the two interfaces for device integration. As I mentioned in the very beginning, we offer direct and indirect integration. And direct is basically on the left, uh, uh, left corner. Um, direct device integration API. That is basically an HTTP interface that a device can pull. It is on purpose a pull-based interface, has a very simple JSON-based uh, layout, is RESTful, and that allows you many things. First of all, because it is a dedicated software update API, it is very easy to keep stable. Uh, in fact, we have kept it stable since the service exists or since the software exists. And this is, of course, quite important. You might have scenarios in the IoT space where you um, manufacture a device with a certain firmware, and then this takes maybe years before the device is actually shipped to a customer and connected for the first time. And or maybe many things have changed in your IoT application. Uh, a lot of, I don't know, interfaces have changed over the years. Uh, you might be in a kind of agile environment in your backend development. However, the device hasn't ha has not changed in that during that time frame because it was on some shelf somewhere. 
Um, so what should at least work uh, is the software update, at least one software update, the one from the manufactured version uh, up to the current version that is then able to go into connectivity to your backend in whichever way you, you might have chosen. Um, <clears throat> so that is why we create this extra API. It allows you to keep it stable very easy. You, for instance, for your for your business integration into your backend, you might have started some time ago with, let's say, co-op, and then you switch to MQTT. Feel free to do all that as long as you as you have the stable API available. You will be able to reflect every change that you did in the backend or so on the device. That's why we created that one. It also allows you to have separation of concerns on the device itself. So especially in IoT gateway scenarios, uh, you might want to choose to put all your business logic on a different technology stack than just a software update. So for instance, you have an OSGI runtime on your gateway, like for instance, based on Cura. Um, and that OSGI runtime, there's a lot of business functionality in it, a lot of, um, and also that includes a lot of potential causes of something going wrong. So you might have, an, I don't know, an OSGI bundle that goes wild and creates out of memory exceptions. So if you handle software update in the same runtime where you have all your business logic, all your apps, for instance, um, there's a high risk that you're not even able anymore uh, to fix the problem. However, if you keep this separate on the device, have a very tiny daemon that just takes care of software update, basically polling Hawkbit's direct device integration API, and to that channel, you can just um, just update the device even if you have a problem in your primary application stack. Um, another big benefit of having a very simple REST HTTP JSON API is um, even if you lose your entire backend, I don't know, your, your database just went to hell, um, at the end of the day, you can just use a web server, put a text file on it, and you're able to do one, one thing, basically tell your device, okay, please update because I just had a lot of unplanned changes on my backend, basically. However, for many projects, that is not sufficient. Projects might have the requirement to use a standard protocol, a protocol that, by design, takes care both of software update um, and general purpose device management and all your business data going through it, or, you, or your device already has a protocol defined, or you have one of those shiny device managements already in your project. In this case, we offer something uh, for what we call indirect device integration, that is a device management federation API. That's basically a back-end service-to-service API that allows you to basically integrate whatever you want. It's MQP-based, um, optimized for high throughput, so you can basically connect as many devices as you want to your, yeah, in, it's in a gray box device management service. Does not necessarily mean it is a real device management. Could just be your, your application or your cloud service that basically integrates the devices. Um, on the northbound side, we offer two interfaces, um, a graphical user interface, we call this management UI. That is basically everything Hawkbit is able to do, you can do through this API. Um, however, in many cases, that is not sufficient. You want to do some general imports, exports, you have your own management application, you have your, let's say you have an industry solution, then you might have your industry management portal, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you want to have a deeply integrated software update capability in your solution. In this case, for this case, we have a very standard RESTful API. We call this management API that allows you at the same time to access the repository, update it, delete entities, create entities, um, extract data, um, call updates, monitor updates, et cetera, et cetera. In general, we try to keep the API and the UI feature equivalent. Um, however, in practice, I would say there are, I don't know, 98% equal. So there are a couple of tiny features that you can do only in the management API or only in the UI. We try from the project side, however, to keep them a feature complete or both sides feature complete. However, sometimes, um, you know, one committer has a primary need um, for a new feature and he needs this only in the management API, so sometimes we are not able to keep up on both sides. But the general ideas and the general concept um, is there, both identical. Um, what does that mean? Um, at the end of the day, you can combine all of these four interfaces for your scenarios. Um, we have, however, customers over here, for instance, at Bosch, 
uh, who use only the left column. Um, so basically, at the end of the day, they have software update capability without one line of code, um, besides, of course, on the device itself. So they integrate with direct device integration API, operators use the graphical user interface, and they're just happy. We have, however, also seen scenarios uh, completely on the right column, basically, means n at the end of the day, device integration, or let's say Hawkbit, is just embedded in an overall IoT um, solution, and everything is done through API, and of course, a lot of combinations between the two. Um, actually, we have seen projects starting with the graphical user interface, and as soon as they wanted to get more advanced in their scenario, then they switched at least some parts of the management API. Um, actually, I think, uh, Michael, correct me, we have not yet seen scenarios where the two device integrations are combined in one project. However, even that is possible. Uh, one Hawkbit repository is able to handle devices from both, from both sources. So that was an um, overview over Hawkbit in general. And with that, I will switch over to Michael if I manage to figure out how to do that. Uh, actually, people can probably switch directly to, to my screen. Yeah. And you are. Um, so I just will take over uh, from here. So two sentences myself. Kai already introduced himself. I'm also with Bosch since 2010. I'm working here with Kai Zimmermann together at our Bosch IoT rollouts, and which is basically uh, Hockbit, the Hockbit update server on the open source project. I'm also one of the committer with Kai Zimmermann on the Hockbit update server. Um, yes, so Kai already showed some overview and already introduced Hockbit in general and give some give some basic introduction. And I want to just keep uh, keep continue on, on giving you some basics on, on Hockbit itself and then join to um, some live demos so you can uh, have, see Hockbit a little bit in action, have some fun with it. So first, one of the basics we, we, we implemented in Hockbit is actually most of the people think that only a software update could be a single file, so you just want to copy a file from A to B. This is maybe sometimes uh, sufficient, sometimes is, 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 even, yeah, is even sufficient on a, on a very dumb device, which just needs a file from A, a to B to copy there. But in Hockbit, we want to be more. We want to provide more metadata on on a software update, and we want to have keep in a in a revision, so you can see which software is installed in which version. So you can encode this everything in a, in a file. But we said, okay, we have more flexible way. Also in the UI, you'll see it later to to enter metadata for a software update. So everything is based. It's not a single file and update. We we collect files together to one software module because one software update could be on several files. Maybe your your rollout, your update on the device needs an OS or needs an application stack, an OSGI container, even it's a runtime. You can zip them together to one big zip file, and your client device needs to extract all of them together. But it's very easy if you could just have the OS software module and your runtime software module and even your application stack in different files and put them together on Hotbit. So we came up with the idea that you can put software modules, you can give them a version, you can give them a key, so you can look them up on your device and put them all together logical-wise on Hotbit to one distribution set. So one distribution set could contain a lot of software module and these software modules can be based on different files, for example, also on different diff files, most of the people have also diff files. So if they don't want to use the whole full update, they have from one version to another version, different diff files. So we came up with the idea to pack everything together, and one update in Hawkbit is always a distribution set, which is based on different modules or different, different files. You will see this one later in the demo. So this is one basic concept behind Hawkbit, which, uh, which is based on <laughs> all the software updates within Hawkbit. Um, the next thing is, if you want to update or lots of a lots of devices, you need you need a very smart and, and intelligent way to find out the targets you want to update all the cars or all your sensors, and you don't want to update all in once probably. So the next basic concept we came up with: uh, you want to you want to have kind of a rollout management. 
And if you think about IoT and everybody's talking about millions and billions of devices, nobody can handle like uh, software updates. You need a good monitoring and a good roll-up management, which which reduces your bandwidth, for example, for download. Not every device can download at the same time. So what you need is actually you need to group them together. And for example, if you do a rollout and your group is failing, you don't want to continue with the rollout because maybe you have a problem in your rollout or in your release. And this is what we also handle in, in, in Hockbit itself. And you'll see it in the demo later on that we can, we can manage rollouts and creating rollouts. And you even can can monitor them. So what's the progress of my current rollout? What's what's in the group? Which which sensors or which devices gets updated? And this is a common functionality which every every IoT domain and every IoT business domain needs. This is the, the common functionality we can put together in Hockbit because everybody needs this kind of feature and everybody is asking for this kind of feature. And you can imagine you can you can uh, implement a lot of features around this basic idea to manage large rollouts. So we came up with the simple version of it and basically step by step want to extend it with more functionality. So these are one, two basic concepts behind Hogbit. And I think the most interesting thing and the most fun thing is actually the demo. So I think we just jump into, into Hogbit directly. And I've already running a Hotbit server. So you, everything, everything what you see in the demo now, just want to infer. This is all on the Hotbit open source. There is none, none locally, none customized or anything. Everything is plain Hotbit, and you can find it on the on the GitHub Hotbit website. And you can also try out the sandbox, which looks very similar to the, to what I'm showing now. You can try it out. You can you can clone and run it by yourself. This is all done in the demo now. So first of all, if you run if you run Hogbit, so I'm running it on my local machine. Um, if you run Hogbit and you log in, this is your the main screen. You see first time, and as you can see, you have you have some some views. We'll come back to them later. You see the deployment management, and you can see I don't have any targets. So what we came up with is in the Hogbit itself, we also created a simulator, which is making it easier to understand Hogbit and to play around with Hogbit. So I've also started the, the simulator for that. It has a little UI, and the UI is just for example, and it's all in the example of the example code. So what we actually can do, and Kai already mentioned, the two different APIs in what, what Hogbit supports. It has a direct device management, device management federation API, and it has the direct, direct device interface, which is basically HTTP based, which Kai already mentioned. So interesting wise, I'm just generating some targets so we have some fun to play around with. Uh, everything is running here locally and we can just generate them in, in our generator. And they're already already on the UI. So we have some some targets to play with. The simulator is actually kind of nice. You just send drag and drop some software updates there and he always responds and, and installing and downloading software and pretend to install something. And uh, you can learn a little bit about how the how the APIs is working and how Hogbit the UI is working as well. So now you can see we already have some simulated devices here. Um, the nice thing is always you need to find you need to find your your targets what you want to deploy onto. So what we introduced we have tagging. Tagging is one nice thing if you want to, for example, manually tag uh, devices. You can multi-select them and just say, OK, these are my Europe devices. This is very kind, very, very nice way to, to group and find your, your, your targets, your deployment targets again. So I can, in Asia, I don't have anything now. So in Europe are my, my simulated targets currently. So this is one thing you can find your, your targets again for deployment. Another thing to find them is you can also create filters. So I'll come back to this later when we're doing our rollout. The next thing is you want to deploy software on it. To deploy software on it, we have uh, this model about distribution set and, and software modules. So all you can find, I already set up a little bit, so we are a little bit, uh, don't need to enter so many metadata. So what you can see, I already created software modules, and these software modules have a zip file on it. And the zip file is nothing special, and the simulator is not, don't care about really the file, what's in the, what's the content about the file. 
Um, so I created two software modules in two different versions, and they have only one single file in it. So there's no diff file in it, nothing, no OS system or Linux system, no runtime. It's just a single FIP file for easier demonstration. The other thing is, hold on. Um, I created two distribution sets, which which containing the software module we've seen before in the slide about our our model about employment model. So our distribution set is also very simple for our demo now. It's like we have one distribution set in version 1.0.0 and another distribution set in a 2.0.0. Um, so these two distribution set I'm able to deploy on our on our deployment targets. So the easiest thing is I can just drag and drop them, and I can verify that I've, I've uh, what I'm doing, and I'm assigning software to it. Now, as you know, it's a polling, so every 10 seconds the device is polling and asking for new software. Um, we can switch back to the device simulator, so he will polling and will check it, or he got a new software update, and he will pretend he's doing something. And in the meantime, he's doing something, he will report sooner or later back that is, everything is okay. So this is the simplest way to really deploy software to single targets. Um, now this works for, yeah, let's say for 10 or 20, even for 100 probably to drag and drop them and, and deploy software to it. But it's not intended to, to, to manage 1,000 or 10,000 or even 1 million or billions of devices. This is not, not working probably to, to manage these software updates by drag and dropping them. <clears throat> so let's let's generate some just some more devices so we can handle and how it looks like when we when we want to handle more devices about it. So for that we are just simulating like using the other API for or let's simulate it. And let's say for a demo I think one thousand is sufficient. Um, let's just use the IMQP. I also have a RabbitMQ running here over IMQP. I can just push them. So the simulator will generate uh, these 1,000 devices uh, over their device management federation API, and it will also shown in the in the Hockbit UI itself. So now it's even harder to figure out which which device I want to up, want to update software to. So a better way to find out these is using target filters. Target filters allowing you to, to creating a filter syntax to finding your targets you want to deploy to. So I already created, because for this demo, I already created two filters, uh, three filters for the DDI, the EMF, and for Europe. I will come back to it later. So now check the DMF simulator. I just I want to have all targets which started with the name DMF. This is quite simple. and probably doesn't work in real life if you have MAC address for IDs or everything else, but for this demo it's quite quite sufficient. So I only see the MF simulated devices in my in my list. Um, I can do the thing like also the same with Europe. I only I ha I tagged my DDI devices before with Europe tag, so I can see all the all the devices which are tagged with a Europe. The filter are quite complex. You can have lists and everything else. This is documented somewhere in this is documented in Hockbit in the wiki itself. And the good thing is I can also use this filter in my deployment view. So I want to see like only my DMF devices. So in this case, I could also select all and drag and drop them, but this doesn't make sense to, up, to update 1,000 targets probably at the same time if you have a have a limited bandwidth and not everybody can download at the same time and you want to want to reduce resources on your Hockbit server as well, we figure out that we need this rollout. So this is the most interesting feature, I guess, about Hockbit itself because this is what everybody needs if you want a large scale out. And what you can do is like we, we just using a Hockbit rollout demo uh, name, let's call it demo. And here I can select which which deployment I want to do. I, I have the firmware update 100 and I have a firmware update 200. So let's just take the 200. Now it lets me filter which to which target I want to deploy to. Actually, I can also create a filter which combining DDI and DMF simulated devices and Hockbit can handle them in the same update sequence. So Hockbit is not it doesn't care about how the device is connected to. 
So it just needs a way to go to send them either HTTP pull request to give them the update or send in events through AMQP. So what we can do is we can create a filter which says I want to have all, all targets in my list, all simulated. So for easier, I would just say we just let the name start. Do we have all targets in this list? These are all simulated devices, and this is our 1010 because we have 1000 DMF and 1010 for the HTTP poll direct device API. So let's go back to the rollout, and we just call it again. Hotbit demo rollout demo. We're selecting our firmware two, and now we just say I want to have it to all. So these are 1010. So we are not caring about if it's connected to API 1 or API 2. Now, the simple way is what Hogbit currently does is you can, you can tell how you want to split them and how many groups you want to split your 1,010 1, targets. So if I'm, if I'm using 10 groups, I will get a group size of 101 for sure. And the cool thing is you can also say when, when the group should be finished or would, would be like... Uh, imagine you have 1 million targets and you have a group size of 1,000. Uh, you don't want to wait until the 1,000 are completely finished, probably. You have one of, you want to set a threshold when the next group can be started. For example, if 50% are okay in a rollout, in a, in a successful update process, you can already start the next group and have two groups in parallel, for example. Um, so I do it a very, very low, so we can see maybe that many groups are started at the same time if, if, the, if, if it's fitting in, in the schedule currently. And the next thing is, you can also tell him, like, if there's an error threshold, if software updates are failing at a precise percentage, you won't probably stop the whole rollout or pause the whole rollout. Because if you if you have a group of of fifty percentage failing, it doesn't probably it doesn't make sense to to continue this whole rollout because it will keep failing your your devices and your devices maybe break. So you wanna you wanna protect the other devices which didn't retrieve the update yet. So I'm I'm I know that our simulator won't won't produce any errors. So I will just I will just set it to low. Can also do it to zero because the simulator won't produce any errors currently. So for that, I can create can create the, the rollout, and it's asynchronously creating all the all the targets and all the groups. Uh, this is a live demo, and I screwed something up on my local PC. I'm not sure why, but you will see in the sandbox it's it's correct. So sandbox is working, but on my local machine not. I'm not sure why this happened. There's a live demo. So what I can see, I can see all the groups, and he scheduled these, and you can see currently the groups are created. Um, a little bit random about what the grouping is, so we are working on that you can maybe select the grouping a little bit in more detail, what kind of groups you want to build on. So what you can see in one group are DMF and DDI devices. So Hogbit just put them together in a group, so 101, as, as he said, together, and all groups are ready. So the nice way thing is, now I just start the whole, whole rollout, and this is the most interesting thing about starting it. And as you can see, it already starts. So 101 are already in progress, and 909 are waiting. So this is the next group is waiting. So after he reached the 10 percentage mark, he should and the scheduler kick in. You will see that another group will start it. So that's a cool thing. So you can now check what rollout, what target already received, and which one already is okay about uh, about the rollout itself. And you can so manage. Uh, manage a large-scale rollout, rollout of thousands or, or millions of devices by selecting the target filters, which target group you wanna you wanna update to, which deployment distribution set you wanna you wanna deploy on these devices, and monitor monitor the whole rollout. So we can also check in the in the simulator itself. As you can see, he will he will doing updates and retrieving updates. And, and just sending our case back. So this is this is what what all the the rollout is. So I think we don't need to watch the whole rollout until the one one thousand devices are are finished because probably take a little while. 
uh, until the simulator will 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 update all these devices because he's faking download and taking some time. So you can see also everything here in the deployment view as well on a single target which action is in progress, and we can also check action history, which is very, 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 very useful if you have a single target and you want to see what happened on the target. So you can see devices are able to give feedback on each action. So if, if your device is doing like downloading, installing, and swapping and everything, he can, he can give feedback to the Hogbit server and you can track all this feedback in, a, in an action history. And we keep this action history for each devices. And you can easily check the history, what, why was it failing, when was it failing, and the, the device itself can also put messages in there, so what, what it's actually doing. So our simulator is not, not providing that many, uh, that many messages, but sufficient, I think, for the demo. Like, he, can, he says what, what he's downloading and where he's downloading, and he says, okay, the simulation is complete, so then the whole rollout is then complete. So this one you can have for each device. Uh, you have an own action history, which looks for a simulator always the same. Um, but it's very, very helpful when, when you have, when you need to invest why this device is maybe failing. It's good if the device gives a lot of feedback, so you can you can see it in your rollout or even on single single targets. So this is actually the. You will find out many, many other small features here and there, but I think this is the general overview about Hogbit and how Hogbit works and how you can maybe use it and check it out and play around with. Uh, I really need to encourage you to try out maybe the, the Hogbit sandbox, which is uh, referenced on, on the GitHub project. You should definitely try it out. You can try out the DDI API, uh, the HTTP, and you can try out the UI as well. You can play around with. And I think that's done for the demo. And maybe Kai want to finish finish up with the slides. Um, yep, yeah, that sounds good. So let me share my screen again. Um, so Michael went through this. Um, so, um, basically, our our data model, uh, rollout management. However, even on his browser, for whatever reason, um, you couldn't see the bars moving. But anyway, hopefully you got the idea. Um, maybe one last word or a couple of words, a sentence before we come to the end, and maybe can start with questions. Um, on the GitHub page, um, next to, of course, the entire code base, um, you find also all the links. Um, um, maybe if you want to chat with us on, on Jitter, um, the project homepage, of course, um, link to the Bluemix, to the sandbox that uh, Michael just mentioned. Unfortunately, we can't provide DMF access because uh, the sandbox runs actually on Bluemix and we don't want to open up currently the DMF by means of our uh, AMQP account to everyone. Um, so unfortunately, you're stuck with, with just DDI, but I guess it's a, it's a good use case and good sandbox anyway. Um, just, just one reminder, um, this is a sandbox, so from time to time, we erase all the data. And unfortunately, you can't upload any artifacts, so we don't want to be the new file share free of charge for everyone. Um, so you can create metadata, connect devices, um, perform updates, but actually not shipping any artifacts from the sandbox. Um, sorry about that. Um, also, I would like to draw your attention to the wiki. Um, we man currently maintaining a wiki where we basically try to explain all the concepts about Hogbit directly on the GitHub page. Um, here you find information about all the APIs, um, uh, the data model that, that Michael explained briefly, overall architecture. Uh, this is far from from being complete, um, but it's an open wiki, so please feel free to provide anything that you figured out yourself. Uh, we, here, in addition from the project team, will also try uh, to provide more information over time and also share also our ideas about future concepts. Uh, we are using GitHub issues, um, so you can also open issues if you have any kind of problems. Um, we are not that active currently with GitHub issues. Um, however, we will try to change that um, over time. Um, and we also intend to invest more on the project homepage. So primarily, we are living in GitHub right now, but we also want to uh, use, of course, the um, Eclipse infrastructure more. 
Um, concerning releases, and then I'm basically finished, um, we still are in a very early phase of um, be becoming part of the Eclipse ecosystem and processes. We definitely want to create a 0 0.1 release, which is actually already branched away from the main master. The, so the main master, we are working towards 0 0.2. Um, especially f uh, around rollout management, and we also do quite a lot of refactorings to make the code easier to maintain for the community. Um, we, while on the other side, 0 0.1 is basically the initial contribution from Bosch. Um, and then we will try to get milestones out as soon as we can. Uh, we try to keep the master clean. Um, you should always be able uh, to build and run it. However, sometimes we make a mistake. Please feel free to contact us on Jitter, create a uh, GitHub issue if you have any problems with, with compile, compilation or trying the system out. So I think that's everything from my side. Um, Michael, final words from your side? Um, yeah, we are, I think we are uh, very happy if somebody want to wanna come in touch with us on, on Gitter is, is quite some, some chatting sometimes, and also on issues, we're happy to, to answer all questions we can answer, and yeah, really happy if somebody come up with good ideas, uh, or maybe even contributions, we're happy happy about it, to discuss also on the community what, what scenarios I think we didn't come up with and didn't cover yet. That's great. We'll put those links on the Meetup page if everyone anyone's interested interested, excuse me, and we can also tweet them out. It was a great demo and overview. Thank you both so much. Um, we actually have one question from Twitter, so I'll ask you now. Does Hogbit plan to provide integration with Eclipse Lesson in the future? Yeah, should I take that one? Um, <laughs> uh, actually, this is not the first time we are asked that question. Um, Lesion um, is actually provides a general purpose live to m interface. That means through Lishan, uh, you can basically do software update, but also all the other stuff that live to m does. So if we integrate or embed Lishan directly into Hogwarts, it basically means with that link, you can do only software update, not all the other things. That's why we believe what should be done is you take Lishan, the Lishan library, integrate it directly into your application, and then just use the DMF uplink to Hogwarts for the software update part. In fact, uh, I think that's it's not a secret. Um, that's exactly what Bosch did. Um, so we are using uh, Lishan in combination with Hogbit uh, exactly that way. Um, we have no plans to open source that because I think it makes no sense. It would, again, only allow you to do software updates through Live with m 2 m and nothing else. Um, that's why we believe it doesn't make much sense to open source it. All right. Thank you. That's it for questions. Um, everyone, you can always ask us questions on the Meetup page afterwards, or on YouTube, or even Virtual IoT with the hashtag on Twitter. And we will see you next week on June 2nd, um, actually in two weeks, for bringing OSGI back to embedded devices. And we're very excited. Benjamin should be back then. Thank you, Kai and Michael. Yeah, thank you, too. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.